There was this one thing that he'd written in 1962, which had never been published, and it was a kind of essay he'd written. Uh, Now, he was writing at that time essays. He wasn't doing his radio commentaries yet, but he wrote a lot. I mean, it's one of the really surprising things about Ray. He probably wrote every day of his life, and he was a good writer. He wrote... He wrote for the vo- human voice. He wrote as a, someone who had developed his early career on radio. He wrote to read, not to be read on the page. But he was always writing these little essays and commentaries. And in this one, written in 1962, he says, um, you know, uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's possible that, that communism will take over and, you know, that it will end in nuclear war and conflict. But you know what? I think it's more likely that communism, the Soviet Union will just collapse. He said um, because he said communism isn't an, isn't even a political system or an economic system. It's just a form of insanity. He, he said it's a violation of human nature. It doesn't make any sense. Nobody would want to live like that. And it's just you know in this essay, and he kind of plays this out. You read this, you think, wow, it's a really interesting view because people on the right didn't think that then. They didn't think communism was going to collapse. But it was sort of Reagan applying his common sense perspective on anything, on everything, to communism. He said it doesn't make any sense for people to live like that. Um, nobody would tolerate it. If they knew how we live, they, they, they wouldn't stand for it. And he had, this, he had this kernel of an idea that he held on to. And you find it repeated in various forms uh, when he starts to do these really interesting radio commentaries in the late 1970s, which were the place he really developed his political ideas between his losing campaign for president in 1976 when he challenged Gerald Ford and his winning campaign in 1980. Uh, And that eccentric view matched up with some other eccentric views he had. You, You find also reading these commentaries, Reagan hated nuclear weapons. He'd been a pacifist. He called himself a pacifist in the 1930s. Um, partly it was you know, his early involvement in theater. He would go to all these plays. He went to see when he was very young, like 19 years old, this play Journey's End, um, which is a, a, a play about the First World War, a Brit- British play that's kind of a pacifist play. It's about the, the waste of the First World War and the, you know, the trench warfare and these young men dying pointlessly. That had a huge impact on him. Another thing that had a huge impact on him was when he was uh, in the Second World War making training films uh, in, in Hollywood, but at a military base, uh, the, the, the base was sent these early films of the liberation of Auschwitz. There's this, you know, there's this myth thing that's totally untrue that's said about Reagan that he claimed that he was one of the people who lib- liberated Auschwitz. He never said anything like that. It's the kind of thing you, you can only believe if you don't actually know the story of Reagan. But he did see in 1945 films of the emaciated prisoners, the piles of, of corpses, and it had a huge effect on him. He actually, Ron Jr. remembers his father trying to make him watch this years later because he says you have to understand this about humanity that this is possible but that was another thing that that influenced this idea he had that nuclear war would be uh, totally horrifying and unacceptable and he thought especially after he became president and the assassination attempt that his mission was to reduce the threat of nuclear weapons uh, and you know, the, the conventional view, the conservative view, uh, is that, well, he had the strategy of peace through strength, came into office, big military build up, you know, dr- make the Soviet Union bankrupt, force them to collapse and surrender. I don't think that's at all what happened, if you look at the record. He was desperate for a connection and negotiation with the Soviet leaders. In the Reagan Library, you can find these handwritten letters, long handwritten letters he wrote to every Soviet leader when he was president, uh, starting with Brezhnev, uh, Chernyanko, uh, Andropov, Chernyanko, finally Gorbachev. And these letters, they're really touching. He says, you know, he says, you and I have the power to destroy the world, but we also have the power to save the world and make peace. And we have to be able to communicate. We have to meet. We have to talk to each other. He was reaching out to try to form a connection. And he would get back these letters that were in this Leninist boilerplate about Western imperialism. And, you know, there was clearly, I mean, these, all these guys were dying, we now know, um, one after the other. But there was, he wasn't able to make any connection. 
And he was terribly frustrated by that and terribly upset about it. And all the time, the, the defense buildup is going on during uh, the, the first term when it's the sort of heyday of the neoconservatives and this hawkish view of the world. Reagan's on board for that, but he's also really, really unhappy because he thinks the world is getting more dangerous. And when he finds out, basically from a CIA briefing, that the, the Soviets actually think that the United States might attack, that, that we have aggressive designs on them, he's shocked. How could they think that? We would never do that. And he, I think in his second term, uh, didn't continue that strategy. He turned around completely. The second term in relation to the Soviets is more like a repudiation of the first term and an acknowledgment that what he tried during the first term didn't work. He didn't scare them to the bargaining table. And at that point, Reagan becomes an apostle, apostle of radical disarmament. I mean, really radical disarmament, more radical than almost anybody on the left supported. He keeps saying in meetings, why can't we abolish all nuclear weapons? And of course, this is tied up with something of a fantasy about Star Wars, as he thinks you can replace nuclear weapons with a nuclear shield. Um, be that as may, he wanted to he wanted to get rid of them, and he and he's constantly at these meetings with Gorbachev trying to make the more radical proposal to get get rid rid of rid of the weapons. 